Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pip's Morning Show Live with Emily, Pip's mom. And hi, I'm Gretchen Cooper, Pip's assistant. We welcome you to day 16 of our quarantine and episode 6 of our brand new show. Uh, so if you've never joined us before, you can always watch our old shows on, on our YouTube or website or anything like that. And we do have a bell here that sometimes when we ring it, Pip comes. Let's see. And then throughout the show, um, Pip may ring it himself. And if that happens, he gets a treat. Right? Yes. So we have a really exciting show for you today. We've gotten a lot of help. Whoa, there he is, Superman himself. That's Superman. Hey, Pip. I like that costume you got on for everybody. That's really nice of you. You want to turn around and show it to him? So we've got Super Pip with us today. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? See how long this costume lasts. And like I said, if Pip brings his own bell, he gets a treat. So we will. That was an early treat, oh, if yes. I do say so myself. There you go, Pip. Okay, so let's just dive right in. Gretchen, do you have some words of wisdom for us? Yes, I do. All right, let's hear them. If I cannot win, let me be brave and attempt. That is very good. Who taught you that? My special effects um, Delaware words of what we do for special effects. So it's like their motto, right? Yes, it so is. So it's let, if I do not win, let me be brave in the attempt? Yes. And what does that mean to you as a special um, effect? Um, if I cannot win um, a game, like... Fallen, if I cannot win Viking uh, competition and go for a year, it's okay. It's just a game. As long as we have fun, that's all that matters. Now, we of course like to be honest with our audience, right? Yes. So maybe we should tell them what you do if you win a ribbon instead of a medal? If you win a um, ribbon, it's still as good as a medal. You can. A great job. You had a great time. You still have fun. Gretchen Cooper, do not lie to our audience. What do you do with your ribbons? I guess I don't keep them. <laughs> That's a polite way of saying Gretchen throws her ribbons away and only keeps her medals. But we're brave in our attempt, right? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And Gretchen's a great Special Olympian. Uh, she has gold, silver, and bronze. Yes. Yeah, so all of them, mostly gold, right? Yeah. Yeah. In um, biking, bowling, and? Bocce. And bocce. Okay. Thank you, Gretchen. You're welcome. Those are some of my, I hear those words of wisdom from you all the time. So it's always good to be not a sore loser, right? Be That's a, right. A, what's the opposite of a sore loser? Um, a champion? Uh... A champion loses sometimes too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. If you can think of the opposite of a sore loser, let, let us know. All right. <clears throat> so today is Monday, March 30th, and we're going to be doing a favorite segment of everyone's, which is our Theracat segment. So we're kind of thinking of, of Mondays as a mental health day, right? Mental health Mondays, that yes. sounds fun. And while we're all sort of trapped at home, we need to really keep our mental health at the forefront. So we're thinking of um, ways that we personally are helping ourselves with our mental health. Theracat's going to join us in just a second with her segment, but I wanted to go ahead and um, we have uh, someone special behind the camera today, so why don't you come on in? Hello everybody! Hi! This is Jack Pip's dad. Hello Jack. What's pretty... Uh, why do you have shoes on? And regular clothes, you're supposed to be in your jammies. <laughs> okay, so... How about we start with you, Pip's dad. What have you yes. been doing to work on your mental health while our lives have been changing? Well, first of all, I would like to say that I still have, I still have to work. I still go to work every day. So it's, my life didn't change that much, like, like as, as you guys, for example. But however, uh, staying positive is a very important thing. And what's what helped me the most is going for a run. I try to go for a run for... for yeah, Pip. There you go. Um, for for about an hour every every day or every other day. That will keeps me uh, uplifted. And let's tell everybody what you've been doing in the mornings and at night. That's a little bit different than what you normally do because we all, we already were exercising. So we're trying to stick to some of our normal routines, but we've added you've added in something new, which is meditate. Meditating, right? And so tell people about how it makes you feel or why you think it's important for everyone to try. Um, I think it's very, very important to meditate because it gives you a sense of stuff 
something to um, sleep good at night and to just relax. Um, that you should just uh, listen to it before you go to bed and just concentrate on trying to, to relax. You can just get your body to just lay down, relax, and hear it in a good way. So Gretchen does a lot of meditation that is a guided meditation, so she's listening to it while she does it. You can also just sit with quiet music or no music at all. Definitely don't sit with a cat that's ringing a bell nonstop, right? Um, but just to create just to create some stillness in your life. For me personally, um, I've really struggled with sort of feeling normal, staying normal, not being overtaken with depression and anxiety, right? Yeah. Uh, and something that I've been thinking a lot about is, uh, you know, Jack's been running, Gretchen's been meditating, we've all kind of been trying to do our own thing, and so one thing that I noticed was that I was reading the news a lot. Like multiple times a day, I was having, you know, CNN on in the background of everything we were doing, and I decided that while it's important to stay up to date with what's going on, maybe having a you know 24 hour news cycle on in the background of your life isn't the most productive. So personally, I've decided to sort of you know remove my cell phone from the bed. You know, don't take the phone to bed with you. Try to keep it in another room while you're in that sort of safe space of sleeping, because during this time, sleep is very important to all of us. And uh, trying not to read the news, but maybe once a day. So Gretchen and I said we would give ourselves one hour a day to maybe listen to the governor's speech or listen to the television or read Google News. Um, but you know, one hour a day is way better than what we were doing, which was like 10 hours a day. Yeah. So limiting those sorts of things. Um, so Theracat's gonna come in right now and she is going to tell us um, her thoughts on our Mental Health Monday. Hi, I'm Pip's pal Theracat. I've come back today to talk about things that are different and things that have stayed the same. I know that right now daily lives are different and that can be scary because we don't always understand what's going on. So I thought my friends and I could give you some tips to think about to make this time a little bit better. Number one, tell someone like an adult and even a special friend like Pip the thoughts that we are thinking. Sharing our thoughts is easier on our brains than thinking heavy thoughts alone. Two, keep in mind that it won't always be like this. Eventually, we will all go back to work and school and play with our friends like we used to. Third, remember that the people who love us will always love us and always take care of us and keep us safe. Most importantly, now is the time to stay connected to others, either in our households or on the computer. We are all going through this together, and we can all help each other out. That's all from Theracat for today. See you next time. Meow. We want to thank Theracat for those wonderful words. Thank you um, very much. Yes, and I just want to add that a lot of people have been talking online about how the feeling that we're all feeling right now is grief, right? And yes. there's varying degrees of grief and there's different ways that people feel it and process it. But I think that what's really important is you've got people on every morning show telling you, you need to exercise. You need to use this time to learn recipes. You need to use this time to lose weight. And I think that if we are thinking of this as grief, right? Let's go into a normal situation where we have grief. So Gretchen, tell everybody what's a time you think of that you might feel grief? When someone dies and that you're really close to and that it kind of makes you don't feel very good. Yeah, and so that I think is probably when all of us feel the most grief. And it's also probably the time that we're all with our family, right? Yeah. So everybody keeps saying like, don't waste this time with your family or don't waste this time to do that project you've always wanted to do. But when we look at it as we're feeling grief right now, that makes me think, well, if someone's mother died and you said, okay, well the whole family's together, so do that project you've always wanted to, would you really want to do that project in the middle of a funeral? No. no. Yeah. And so I think that we need to take a step back and say, it's okay to not do some huge project right now. It's okay to come out of this week's period of isolation with just a little bit done. You know, we don't need to change the world in eight weeks. We just need to keep ourselves alive 
and as close to happy as we possibly can be, right? Yeah. So it's, it's about very small things right now. So for me, that's, you know, eating healthy because I finally have the time. For Gretchen, it's meditating. For Jack, it's being able to work on his running time. And so we're all going to be able to do certain things, but there, I don't need to be running, making healthy meals, meditating, and writing five new pip books, right? And, and so and keeping up with the news. Yeah, and so I think that when this whole quarantine started, my first thought was, oh my gosh, I'm going to write the next five books in our series. And then I was like, why can't I do this? Why don't I feel like doing this? And I think that we need to analyze sort of where we're coming at this from. And, and no, again, it is okay to not do a to-do list four miles long while we're home. So we still have a bunch to get to. We've got some fan mail to read with Pip. We've got um, some special Pip tips today. And then we also have, of course, our joke and our new website that we're launching. All right, so let me get Pip out of this costume so he can read his fan mail a little easier. So let's see what we've got today, Pip. Meow. I love you, Pip. And it's a little drawing of you. Dear Pip, I'm your biggest fan. I love cats. I actually have a tabby cat, an orange one. I hope you and your family is doing good. I saw you at the beach before and got a picture with you. My birthday is on the 27th, so I hope you get this in time and I hope you write back. Love your best friend, Jenna. Jenna, happy birthday. Happy I know birthday, we're, Jenna. We're a few days late, but um, we are very excited for you. I wonder how old she's turning. And hopefully we will get to see you soon. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. This is coming from a Lodi in, I believe, Oregon. That's pretty exciting. Found the Lodi. Dear Pip the Cat, it is surprising that you can send letters to people. So when you send me back, send me dog stickers. Well, Lodi, we don't have any dog stickers, but we'll be sure to send you some cat stickers. Thank you. Pip, you've got some more mail. Do you want to come read it with us? Dear Pip, we just read your first book at Grandma's house today, and we can't wait until she buys volume two. We are excited to come to Ocean City again this summer and meet you on the boardwalk. Hope we get a high five. Reading your book cheered us up while we are home from school right now. We hope you and your family stay well. Love, Ava, Luna, Piper. You can spend a response to our grandma, Leanne. Well, hi, Leanne, and thank you so much for all of these cute little cards from the little ones. Thank you. We have a beautiful family photo, and then think oh my goodness three little teeny cards that say two pip from piper i love you you are the best we have two pip from ava can't wait to see you in ocean city you're the best see you at the beach your book was amazing thank you and two pip from luna that says you are the best see you at the beach all right so luna ava and piper we will see you at the beach hopefully and um I guess an insider tip would be if you want a high five from Pip, always come towards the beginning of any of our meet and greets because that is when he is definitely awake and ready. Um, if you catch us later in the evening, he might be on one of his nap breaks, right? Thank you. So there we go. Hi, Pip. You got some more fa Oh, look at that. Do you see that sticker? That's so cute. So cute. So this is from Anne, and Anne actually posts for the Instagram account at Forgotten Cats. So I don't know if you guys remember, but Forgotten Cats is a huge nonprofit on um, the East Coast near us, and they do all sorts of foster work. Um, they help rescue kittens. They're just doing, you know, the best stuff for everybody. So if you need a cat, um, we foster locally through Town Cats, but Forgotten Cats um, has fosters all over Pennsylvania, Maryland, things like that. Um, and their Instagram is fun to follow, that's for sure. So this says, Dear Pip, hang in there. You can make it through these tough times of social distancing. Love following you on Instagram. Your trip to Poland looked amazing. With love from your fan, Anne. So Anne, we love following you on Forgotten Cats Instagram. You guys always have the cutest little stories when people get adopted. Um, when people, when kittens get adopted. Yes. Thank you. And we'll be writing you back soon. And we'll be uh, talking a little bit this week about what it's like to foster cats. And we have a foster cat update coming for you on Friday. Dear Pip, we live in adult foster care in Gaithersburg, Maryland. We have eight people living in one house. We have four cats. Their names are Kitty Kitty, Lucky, Rusty, and a dog named Buddy. 
What's the weather down in Ocean City, Maryland? The weather in Gaithersburg, Maryland is cloudy and cooler today. We love you very much, Pip. We like to see your posts on Facebook. Love, Susan, LaKimmy, Chris, Jerry, and Mike. Well, thank you so much for your letter. I would say our weather here has been pretty similar. Not not too much sunshine. We had like a, a good day, I guess, what, Friday? Yeah. We sat out on the balcony for a little bit and got some sun. Um, but it was so sweet for you to write us, and we'll have something coming back for all of you, okay? Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy it. And our last one for the day is from Marielle. And Marielle says, Hi, Pip. This card was made for you by five-year-old Marielle. She's met you a couple of times, got some high paws, and a photograph book. She loves watching your adventures on Facebook and hopes to see you again soon, Marielle. And let's see her beautiful card. Dear Pip the Cat, I love you. Pip hearts Marielle. And look, Aww. isn't that so cute? We'll have to show everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marielle. We love this drawing. It is so cute. All these drawings of Pip Thank that we've done. Thank you so much for drawing um, a cat for Pip. Thank you. Um, all these drawings that we've been getting of Pip, we are saving. We have a little scrapbook of them all, so we're very happy to be adding this one to it. Like we said last week, we've got a brand new website to launch, and I don't even think Gretchen knows what it's called yet. So we have now, um, in addition to our Pip the Beach Cat website that focuses on pretty much everything that Pip does, we have a new website called PipsGuideToOceanCity.com, and it is going to focus on all of our advice for visiting Ocean City, for our favorite things to do in Ocean City, for anything and everything that has to do with our hometown. So, today's uh, premiere is going to be our read-along. So some of you have already watched this or read it or seen it, but um, our first post on Pip's Guide to OceanCity.com is going to be pictures of his entire volume one book. So you guys can totally read it for free online right now. And it also has a Reading Rainbow read-along. So you can um, click in that YouTube video and actually have the entire book read to you. So we're really excited about that. You'll also find um, on that page that we have a coloring sheet to do. So we've got our first coloring sheet uh, there that you can download and we will be adding more. Um, we're actually going to do probably a whole post of free printables and things for, for this time, right? Because yes. we all need something to do. So go ahead over to that website, check it out, and um, if you've got kids at home and you just want them to have a few minutes of a story being read to them, you can click play on that read-along. Have you watched it? No, I haven't yet. you got to watch it. I will watch it, yes. And you can tell the kids it's actually Pip narrating the story. And that leads us to our question of the day, which was, how did you teach Pip to ring the bell? So ringing the bell is actually probably like step 100 in our training of Pip, right? Yes. And um, the reason why we trained Pip, well, there's a few reasons. One was because he had an audition in New York, and the person that we talked to about it, whose cat has been on Saturday Night Live and been in commercials and things like that, she said, you know, he needs to have a trick we also did it because we were reading about, you know, what to do with a cat that's very rambunctious, that has a lot of energy, but is living in a small space. And they recommend to train them with tricks because it gives them a challenge, it gives them something to do. And so you can kind of think of, like, why humans like to put together puzzles, right? Yeah. And imagine if every time you matched a piece in a puzzle, you got a cookie. That's right. Wouldn't that be great? Yes. So, it would. so training a cat um, is really beneficial for them. It it helps them learn. It keeps them active. Uh, we know that when Pip does all of his training, he is purring the whole time. We can hear it. Uh, but so uh, Pip's dad actually is who trained him. I know that we said he scoops the poop and that's all he does. Yeah. But he actually is who trained Pip originally. Uh, so he's going to come in throughout the next few weeks with his tips. And we've got his first segment for you ready to go. So here are... Pips, tips for training your cat with Jack.
everybody, my name is Jack and I'm Pip's dad and I would like to welcome you in my, um, my corner where I would like to share with you some tips in training the cats. Okay, today is the day one and first what you should do, what, what I did, was I read this book called Getting Started Clicker Training for Cats and then for one day you have to use a clicker. The day one of training you simply just do click and treat. No tricks, just click and treat. If you go to your local pet store, you'll probably find, hello kitties, you'll probably find a lot of different clickers, they're like with pointers, they're just like little thing, like a keychain. Uh, so all you do is just click, treat, click, treat. Don't do it like too many times at a time, just like do two times and wait a few minutes. He knows. He knows I click, he knows he's getting a treat. Alright, so thank you to Pip's dad for those tips and tricks. Of course, you can always comment or email us if you have something specific that you want to know. Uh, and I think, uh, time for a joke? Yes. You're taking back over? Oh, yes. Alright, let us hear it. Why do cats good at video games? Why? Because they got nine lives. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, so that was a good one. But also your laugh is infectious, Gretchen. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, so like we said, folks, head over to our new website. Um, we'll be telling you about every new post that we do. We've got a bunch lined up to share. Uh, and then hopefully by the time summer starts, it'll be raring to go with hundreds of articles. Um, but for now, you've got that read along. We've got some printable coloring sheets there. And uh, do you have anything else? Um, I don't think so. Pip, do you have anything else? No, I'm good. All right, well, all I've got is stay pipsy. See you guys tomorrow. See ya. <laughs> Pip, do you want to come eat the rest of this chicken? Come here. Yeah, come on up. Come on. There we go. There's our little guy. Jeez, this lap. This lap. All right, so let's do this. This is still on camera. Have you never watched our show? We always do an after the stay Pipsy, like let Pip finish his treats thing. I don't think Pip's dad has watched the show. No, I really don't think so. He would know that the camera still picks up the little... Yeah. Are you going to leave it? Yeah, we're going to leave it. Is she crazy? Yes. We always... You have men we all, Yeah, you do have men are. Yes. We always leave it till Pip's done his treats. All right, now they're done. And then we cut it. Fade to black. <laughs> All right, good work, everybody. Great show.